If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. All right, boys, girls, ghosties, and ghouls, we got another deck profile for you today, and it's a little Halloween special. So we got our Night Rose uh, Grand Blue Premium deck profile uh, with all the new support from History Collection. So Night Rose got a fun little buff, and we got some promos and some fun stuff. So we, this is like a really fun toolboxy deck that I picked up uh, thanks to all the support from History Collection and that premium deck set that Night Rose and Harry had that came out within the last year. So I'm gonna show you guys what I put together for my Grand Blue deck. Starting off with our starter, which is Peter the Ghosty, which is the starter that came in the History Collection bo box, which is really cool. Um, I love this artwork for Peter. I love that it's technically ghosty support, so it's really good with the deck. Um, but it's like the, all the other V starters, it gives you a quick shield, it lets you draw a card, all that good stuff. So I love, I love Peter the Ghosty. Then for normal unit grade threes, we got our three copies of G Night Rose. So this is the original Night Rose from G era. It has that GB2, when something's retired, you mill three to call it back. And then it's got that stride skill to kind of last pick a card from drop, call it, and it gets 2K. So very good for stride skill, and it's got a very cool defensive ability too, but we'll get into that just a little bit. Then we're running our fourth Night Rose, which is good for like the bad bounty turns. What it does is when a rear guard attacks or boosts, it gets 5K and then it dies at the end of its battle. When it attacks, when Night Rose attacks, you kind of bless one, pick a column, choose two cards from the drop, call it to that column, uh, and if your opponent's banker is greater or greater, this gets 10k when it attacks. So a bunch of multi-attacking, a lot of big numbers for that bad bounty turn thanks to this Night Rose. This is your finisher, but you pretty much want to ride the G Night Rose first. So I'm going to move those aside to get into the rest of our grade threes. We're running two copies of Beatrice. So what Beatrice does is when it's placed on banner rear, you can Soul Blast 1, call a card not named Beatrice to a rear guard circle. So that's just really, really good. Just Soul Blast 1, call any card. It has a Vanguard skill where all your ghosties on rear guard circle get 5k, intercept, uh, 5k power, 5k shield, and intercept. Then when your rear guard uh, is retired by card ability during your turn, you can Count Blast 1, call a ghosty uh, with grade less than the card that that was retired. That's only on Vanguard Circle, but we're pretty much using it for its rear guard skill. Uh, but you can use it for those bad bounty turns alternatively as well. So this is just a really good alternative ride uh, if Night Rose is just not in your drop zone for whatever weird reason. Then uh, we are running two copies of Skull Dead Dragon, uh, Undead Skull Dragon, sorry. It's, this is just a really, really, really big beat stick. Uh, it, you can't call it from hand, so you have to call it from drop. This gets 2k for each card in your drop zone. Uh, and at the end of the battle that attacks, it gets retired. So this is just a huge beater because you're trying to get to up to like 30 cards in your drop zone anyways. So it's plus 60k ideally when you get towards the end of the game, but it's just a really, really good card. And lastly for grade threes for my normal units, we're running the one Night Storm. This is just really, really good for extending your plays. Uh, on rear guard circle, GB1 when it's hollowed. At the end of the battle that it attacked Vanguard, you kind of last one. Choose a card not named Night Mist from your drop and call it to a rear guard circle, rear guard circle that this unit is not on. Um, it does have a Vanguard ability, but it helps you find units with a hollow ability from among them. You, you never want to ride this, so don't ever do that. Um, but uh, this is just a really good extender as a one of, so I do like having it in the deck. So. That is it for the grade threes. We're gonna jump into our grade two normal units. Starting off, we got our four copies of Columbard V-Series. This card is just really, really, really good. Vanner rear when placed, kind of lost one, search your deck for up to one card, discard it, then call a card from your drop to the rear guard circle. You can only use the ability of Columbard once per turn. So Columbard is just your ideal right target, you find whatever you're looking for for your toolbox. This is just the, the toolbox card. So I really like that you can use it when placed just anytime during the battle phase for late game so that you can kind of extend your plays that way as well, which is really nice. So this is just a really good call target and it's your ideal ride. So we definitely want to run four of it. Then we're running three copies of Riveting France, Franche, French, Frenchy. This is a V promo, this is the one that every clan has been getting where 
that uh, beginning of your ride phase, if your van goes grade one or less, you can discard this. Look at the top five, look for a grade two or less, put it in your hand. Uh, what's really cool about this is that just really helps with Grand Blue because it's going to your drop zone, which fills your drop. You're looking through your deck for an ideal ride and you're kind of toolboxing your deck and filtering your deck as you go. So this is just a really helpful card for that. The first skill, Vanner Rear, when this unit attacks while boosted, you cannot blast one. Choose a card in your drop with a different name as this unit and call it to rear. So it's similar to Columbard, uh, except for the fact that it needs to be boosted. And you just counter blast one, pick a card from your drop and call it. So this is just a really good extender as well. So I definitely want to run three copies of this. Not running the four, but I, you know, you can kind of alternate maybe three of this, four of this. It's up to you. But I, this is just a really good card to have in your hand when you're kind of filtering and looking for cards you need. And also if you're missing a grade one, you just use this top five, look for a grade one. Easy peasy. Going on to grade twos, we got two copies of Greed Shade. Greed Shade's a really good uh, filter card as well. When placed, you discard a card from your hand, mill two, then you pick a card from drop and add it back to your hand. So this is really good for grabbing PGs, heal triggers for G guards, etc. So this is what this card's really good for. It also gets 5K when your drop is 10 or more cards. So it's got a little 14K beater to it as well, which is nice. Um, but we are mostly using it to like put cards back in our hand. We're getting into the fun part of the toolbox where we got all of our one ofs. So we're running one copy of Jesse the Ghosty. Jesse is our counter charge, uh, or one of our ways to counter charge. Act, uh, you can retire two rear guards, not name Jesse the Ghosty to call this two rear guard circle from the drop zone. You can only use that once per turn. When it attacks, it gets 5K and at the end of the battle, you retire it. And if you do not counter charge, you can counter charge uh, with the skill of Jesse. Um, that's if you haven't already used Jesse's skill once already. So good for like, if you just need one more counter blast for like, you know, Night Storm or something like that, Jesse is really helpful for that because you just pull it out of the drop. Then we got our Skeleton Cannoneer, which is really, really funny because it works really well with Night Rose's GB2, where if this is on the rear guard, so when it's on the rear guard circle, if it gets retired, you can call it back out with Night Rose. So then you can kind of disrupt your opponent's plays. Uh, what it does is when it's placed, you kind of blast one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. And if this unit is placed hollowed, you can draw a card. So hollowed, it's got that little keyword where, you know, when it's placed on weird, if it becomes, if you declare that it's hollowed, it just dies at the end of the turn. So this is just really good for that, for disrupting opponent's plays. You could also call this out with Beatrice uh, using a Negra Lily, which is really, really funny. So that's just another thing you can do. So, you know, I, I really like Skeleton Cannoneer. And then we got our one Stormride Ghost Ship. In your hand, you cannot call it normally. So you can't even call it the card circle but when it attacks, it gets 15K and at the end of the battle, you draw a card and retire this unit. So you just ride Columbard, filter this, call it back out. You got a 24K beat stick, your grade two turn, which is nice. Uh, so this is just a really good card and it's a free draw. That is it for the grade twos. Starting off with grade ones, we got our Tommy the Ghosty Brothers, which is our grade three searchers. So it's the one where when it's placed on Vanner Rear from hand, look at top five, look for a grade three, add to hand. And if you added a card to your hand, discard something. This is really helpful to put grade threes into your drop zone. So like Skull Dragon, Night Mist, or sorry, Night Storm, Beatrice, just looking at the top five and just throwing them in your drop zone, which is really helpful. I also like that it has that 5K. So during your turn, if your drop has five or more cards, it's a, you know, 13K beater or booster. So I do like this um, alternatively to the other Tommy. And since we have cards like Columbard and like Greed, Greed Shade, which can help you put Night Rose into your hand really easily without having to search the deck. This I would rather run this version of Tommy anyways. Uh, this, this deck is just so toolboxy that there's no need for the other Tommy in my opinion. Then I'm running three copies of Negrobone. Uh, it's Act, Drop, Discard a card from your hand. Then you put this at the bottom of your deck. Uh, you call a grade one, from your drop to the rear guard circle, but if you have 10 or more in drop, you can call any grade instead. So what you do with this is that when you get to the point where your deck is super, super low, and you've got like maybe, I don't know, five or six cards left in your deck, you have all three copies of your Negro Bones in the drop zone, you just use all three to put them at the bottom of your deck so you know that the bottom three cards are not triggers, and then you build a board, and then you are able to perform all your drive checks and all your skills without worrying about deck out. So that's what Negrobone's for. It's just to 
prevent deck out and it's really helpful and I was running two uh, but I got really scared and almost decked out the two so I'm running three just to be safe. Uh, getting to our one ofs, one copy of Skeleton C, Navigator, Act, Rear, uh, rest two of your rear guards. You can include this in itself. Uh, discard the top five cards of your deck. So what I really like this is just kind of like drop zone ramp. So you just rest, you know, and rest another rear guard, mill five, and then, you know, you got some cards to work with there. Um, but the goal, like I said, or might have mentioned earlier, is the goal is to get to like 30 cards in your drop zone. So this helps with that. So if you do it once, once turn, it stays alive. You do it the next turn, that's 10 cards in your drop right away. Uh, some people are running two. I was doing that at one point and it was kind of funny, uh, but just for the sake of consistency and space, I dropped it down to one, uh, but I still think this is a really helpful card to kind of help ramp your drop zone. Then we got our one copy of uh, Sleeve Tugging Bell. Uh, this is a D-series card. What it does is when this is placed on rear, you put all your cards that are bound back into your drop zone and this gets 5K for each card. So this is really mostly for the Narukami matchup against Vanquisher. So if all of your cards in your drop zone keep getting bound, you call this out and then you put them all right back into your drop zone, which is kind of helpful. Uh, then we got our one copy of Hanali because you know Hanali is just a crazy card. Uh, it's got that cool errata where all the same effect where all your rearguards cannot attack the vanguard during the fifth battle of the turn of war. So that's just for all players. They have to pay a counterblast that they want to attack. So it kind of helps where, you know, your opponent has to pay extra costs. Uh, it also has that act ability where you remove this unit and your opponent, until the end of your opponent's next turn, they have when it's the fifth battle or more uh, and your opponent's rearguard is attacking your vanguard, they have to pay a counterblast when they attack. So this is just to be able to search it out. And if your opponent's in a tight spot, you just pull this back out in the rear guard circle, use its ability, and then, you know, go from there. Toolboxy deck, so we might as well run it. And that is it for the grade one normal units. We got our one grade zero normal unit, which is Grenache. This card is insane for counter charge. It has hollow and it has GB1 when it's put in the drop zone from rear due to uh, the effect of the hollow ability, you counter charge two. So what you like to do with this card is you have it on rear hollowed, you're on night rows, hollow activates, this dies, you counter charge two, you're at GB2, you use night rose's ability to bring it back, boom, you hollow it again, it's still the end phase, and so it dies again, and then you counter charge again. So getting a lot of counter charge out of this card is just really, really insane. Um, so this card is just like too good not to run. So yeah, it's been around for a while since this card's been out, it's been crazy good. This was also the starter for the Night Rose trial deck. Fun fact, if you didn't know about that. So these two have been together for a really long time. So now we're getting into the trigger units. Starting off, we're running the Blue OT, Spiritual King of Aquatics, Itisaro. What it does is its additional effect is you can give a unit a crit, and you can uh, choose a card from your drop and put it back in your hand. The reason we're running this instead of the Stoicaea over trigger is because the Stoicaea over trigger forces you to draw an extra card, which is kind of scary sometimes, but the, the, they both give an extra crit. The Stoicaea one does give a front and does heal. Like it's, it's nice, but the extra draw does scare me sometimes when I'm doing like close to my like end game term and I'm triple driving and then I get an OT and I'm like, oh no, I have to draw two extra cards off of this, help. <laughs> so, but I do also like that this helps you put cards from your drop back into your hand. And since you're toolboxing through your deck and you're filling your drop zone, that comes in handy as well. So I do like the Adesario. Critical triggers, I'm running three copies of the Errata Rampage Shades. So this is the one where if you damage check it, it counts as a draw, so you can draw a card. Uh, when your Vanguard with Night Rose in its grade three or greater Vanguard with Night Rose in its name attacks, you can move this to the soul, uh, draw a card and that Vanguard gets 5K. So that's still really good. The reason I'm running the three is because I'm running four, cop four copies of Rampage Shade. So three of the G1, one of the Sentinel. So it's got 30K shield. Um, we're doing this because instead of running a lot of draw PGs, we're running Sentinel crits and a few draw just a few draw PGs. Continuing on to the crits, I've got two copies of Chad the Ghosty. Uh, it's the one where when you're paying the cost for stride, it counts as a grade three and it's a ghosty. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, so it does come up every now and then where I want to discard it for stride, but it's also a toolboxy deck. So if I want to put it back in my hand, I can. So it's it helps and it's a crit. Then I'm also running two copies of Rough Seas Banshee. This is the G era one. So what it does, it has the act ability you put into the soul. If you have a Grand Blue Vanguard, you draw a card. Um, it only gives 5k power and it has 15k shield. So we don't want to run too many of these, but it's still really helpful because it's filling soul. You get to draw a card, which is kind of helping you filter through your deck, which is nice. So it's still a pretty helpful card and a crit is a crit. We got two copies of our draw trigger, which is Gus Jin PGs. Uh, PGs are always still good. So we want to run a few of them and we can always just mill them, put them back in our hand, which is nice. Uh, but we don't want to run too many draws because we don't want to deck out. Then we're running one copy of Mick the Ghosty and Fam. Uh, Mick the Ghosty and Fam has Hollow, has GB1 when it's placed on rear from the drop zone. Uh, if this unit is placed hollowed, you can choose one of your units and it gets 10k. And at the end of the turn, you uh, if this unit is put into the drop zone from rear, you will put it back into your deck and shuffle your deck. So you put the stand trigger back in. What I really like about Mick the Ghosty is that you can do a similar thing with Negro Lily when you're G-guarding and you call a Beatrice, or if you like do some jank stuff with Night Rose and Columbard or whatever, or if this is already still on your rear guard circle for some reason. You call this from drop, then you hollow it, and then you give your Vanguard 10K during your opponent's turn. So it's kind of like getting a trigger while you're G-guarding, which is really nice. So really good defensive plays with Make the Ghosty. Lastly, for our heal triggers, we're running three copies of the Sea Cruising Banshee, which is our heal guardian. So when it's placed on guard, if you're not on a grade three Vanguard yet, you can give your Vanguard 10K for the turn, or you can choose one of your opponent's units and it gets minus two crit for the battle. So you have those options. It also has that cool ability where if you uh, have no damage and you place it on rear, you can put the top, top card of your deck in the damage zone, just so you can have some damage to work with. Then I'm running one Dewey the Ghosty, mostly because he's a ghosty. Uh, but what Dewey does is uh, when it's placed onto the drop zone, uh, when you're paying the cost for G-Guard, you can bind it and another heal um, so that you can either counter charge or soul charge. I like doing this just because if I am like one counter charge short of using Negro Lily, or if I need a counter blast for stride next turn, um, I do like having the option to have this in hand just so I can guarantee that I have the counter blast that I need. So that's mostly what it's there for. But that's pretty much it for the trigger units. So now we're moving on to the last little bit, which is our order cards. Our first order is Elementary Sanctitude because it's our basically our fourth PG, um, but it's we're in a meta where every unit that is battling you is gonna have triple drive any, anyways. So like Elementaria, you know, free PG. And then Forbidal, which is an order card, which is pretty insane in this deck. Uh, you play it, you either search your deck or your drop zone for up to two grade threes or grade fours, but we only run grade threes. And you call them to rearguard circle. So you can call out your Beatrice, your Skull Dragons, your Night Storm. Uh, it's just to help you pull stuff out of your deck and call stuff from the drop zone. So might as well. And you can add this back to hand thanks to Greed Shade. So if you haven't used it already, um, Regalis pieces are pretty, pretty good. So I think this is a really good addition to the deck. All right, so now moving on to the fun stuff, which is the G-Zone. We got two copies of Bandit Rum. Uh, this is the old version, not the Errata. So I will go ahead and give you a quick summary of what the Errata is. It's main phase. Uh, if your Vanguard is Night Rose and you did not acquire any markers yet, so you have no markers, you can discard a card, cards whose total costs are grade three, and then you stride this onto your Vanguard uh, by flipping another copy of itself face up, and then you requ acquire two protect markers. So you can do this while your opponent's at grade two because it's an act ability and you're not paying the cost of stride normally. So the minute you ride G Knight Rose, you stride this by discarding a grade three, get to protect two markers to make those columns bigger. And uh, then you can use its other ability, which is when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, you can choose one card from your drop, call it to rear and it gets 2K. The cool thing about these errated cards is their ability for when they hit, activate even if they don't hit. So the ability is gonna go off regardless. Thank you, Erratas. So the cool thing about this card is it gives you markers. You can stride or your opponents at grade two and you can multi-attack, which is pretty, pretty dope. So uh, two bandit run, 
because you can only use two because you can't use it again once you get your markers. They're running two Bartholomew, which is like a finisher, but it also can be like a mid game card. What it does is when it attacks, you can't blast one, choose up three cards from drop, call them to rear, and they get 5k. Super simple. Uh, the second skill is crazy. It's when your drop zone has 30 or more cards, your opponent must call three cards at a time when they're guarding from their hand. So that's for every attack during the turn, once you get the 30 cards and drop. So every little poke, 14 up to like 60K, they gotta guard with three at a time from their hand. So this is the hand killer, this is the finisher. It calls three more things when it attacks. So uh, this thing is really good. I'm running two copies so that I can maybe use one as a mid -again card and again as a finisher if I choose to. Um, and it was also really cheap when I picked it up, so yeah. One came in the premium deck set and uh, the other one I bought separate. Then I'm running two copies of Twilight Night Rose. Um, most decks are not running this. Uh, this is mostly because I don't have extra copies of Bad Bounty. Uh, don't judge me for that one. Uh, but I do like the Twilight Night Rose because it has a really funny Chaos Breaker matchup, surprisingly. So what it does is act, kind of last one, you choose a copy of Twilight, turn it face up, and you choose up to the same number of cards in your drop zone as the number of face-up cards in your G zone, plus one, and you call them to rear guard circle as hollowed. So all your rear guards are called hollowed, and then if you call three or more, this gets a crit. So it's a good field builder. Not so much multi-attacker, but a good field builder. Beginning of the battle phase, choose one of your units for each Night Rose that's uh, in your drop zone, and they get 5k. Right? So since we do run a playset of Night Rose, technically, if we have all four or you know even three in our drop, we can pick three units to get 5K, which is nice. It's helpful. So I do like running this, but uh, you know, it's only run two and G Zone has space, so we can work with it. Let's shift these up a little bit, make some more room. We got the one copy of Bad Bounty, which uh, I would run two, but uh, I don't feel like buying a $10 card. Maybe I should, but you know what? The one Bad Bounty works fine for me. Uh, what Bad Bounty does, this card is honestly kind of insane. Uh, at the end of the battle it attacked, you kind of bless one, discard three cards from your hand, put this into your G Zone face up, and you ride a grade three from your drop as stand. So after you swing with this, you ride Night Rose, and then you use Night Rose's ability to swing and call another column and just keep on extending your attacks. So that's kind of like the goal here is to get five drive checks out of the turn to Vanguard swings. Uh, Bad Bounty is just an, honestly such an insane card. I really should get a second copy of it. Um, but for now, I am just running the one that came in the premium deck set and it's been okay for me so far because Bartholomew is still a really good finisher. I would say uh, ditch the Twilights, get more bad bounties. Um, but if you're kind of hoping to kind of build your deck on a budget and not spend a bunch of money in the G zone, you can get away with one bad bounty, but you need one. You need at least one. This card is just too good. Then we got our one obligatory big Obadiah. He's honestly just in there for space. This is your other bad bounty, honestly. Uh, kind of blast one. Turn it anything in your G zone face up, search your deck for up to five cards, put them into your drop zone, shuffle your deck, call up the two cards from your drop for each face up card in your G zone and they get 5K. So this used to be like your first stride, but now that we have bandit rum, it's like, oh, well, like, what do we do now? Big Obi is just kind of flip fodder at this point. So yeah, it's just for space, but I, I like Big Obi. He's so cool. He's a little, he's a little ghosty man. Look at him. Just doing his thing. Uh, then we got our one Harmonix Messiah uh, because you kind of have to in this game. It's the card that, you know, lets you get your guardian ticket. Uh, it has that cool ability where if your rear guards are locked, you can discard a bunch of cards from your hand to unlock them. But if you're playing against Chaos Breaker, that's a really bad idea. And yeah, like if you didn't take any damage, you can put the top card of your deck into your damage zone and then draw a card. So it's got a, a bunch of new text. Uh, you can still use the old Harmonix Messiah if you still have them, like the, the old like BT-16 ones, um, because this is just an errata. But yeah, you kind of have to run this card in premium, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, we're running it. We got our one Harmonix. G-Guards! We got our three Negra Lilies. This card is just really, really, really funny. What it does is when it's placed, you count plus one, pick a rear guard, retire it. Then you call a normal unit with ghosty in its name to the rear guard circle. This gets 10K shield. You wanna know what's really funny? Beatrice is a normal unit with ghosty in its name. It's ghosty leader Beatrice. So what you can do is you can call Beatrice, use Beatrice's skill when placed 
to call another card from your drop zone to the rearguard circle. Like, you can call Skeleton Cannoneer and then retire an opponent's rearguard for two counterblasts, which is really, really cool. Or you can just call something else, you know, you, you can call for an extra 10k to your van. You know, there's there's just different things that you can do here with this, with this fun little combo. And if you can't do it with Beatrice, you can figure it out with Night Rose and Columbard and all this other stuff. There's still ways to go about it. This card is just a really good, insane defensive card. And you don't have to worry about Counterblast because that's what Grenache is for. Two copies of Negronora, what it does, place on guard, Soul Blast one, flip a G, Guardian, face up. Choose two cards with different name or different grades from your drop, put them into the Guardian circle. And you know, you can just put a PG, which is pretty cool from drop. So that's uh, this is just really good for putting a good shield into uh, your guard circle from the drop zone. One copy of Orinora, is that her name? Oriana, sorry. When placed, you kind of lost one. You pick your opponent's unit for every 10 cards in your drop zone, that unit gets minus one crit. So this is really good to go against someone's really big beefy Vanguard. Uh, they just get minus two crit and it's pretty much not gonna hit. You don't need to worry about shield. And lastly, Corpse Dragon, uh, just because um, if you really just need to guard just for the sake of it and you need to mill, you can. Or it's also your flip target for Negronora. So what it does when it plays on guard, you mill the top two cards of your deck and this gets 5k shield. So instead of it being a G guard that has a cost to it, you can just play it for free, mill two, get shield, and you can go from there. But that's it. That is the deck profile. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I've gone through so many different iterations of this deck, but I'm kind of satisfied with where it's at right now. And I'm really excited uh, with using this deck with the new V promo. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. This thing is just like really, really good with the deck as well. So hopefully I'll show off some more games with this in the future with the updates. Uh, but for now, thank you so much for watching. Also guys, be sure to check out 50 cards and look at their singles, their playset bundles. It makes it really easy for you to update your decks going forward for playing standard. Uh, they got deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, Shadowverse bundles if you wanna play Shadowverse as well. Uh, we're gonna be getting into some Shadowverse content pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. Um, and be sure to use code Nexus to get 5% off as well. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, always appreciate you guys hanging out and watching my deck profiles and happy Halloween.